Good morning. Here we are. It's Tuesday, <clears throat> January 23rd, 2024. <clears throat> Hope everyone's having a good morning. It's going to, looks to be a beautiful day here today. So thankful for that. As you can see, I'm here at the church in my office and getting ready for uh, a funeral for uh, Terry Camacho. So um, pray for the Camacho family today. Would really appreciate that. <clears throat> pray for Joe. Um, pray for his safety, you know, with uh, his immunity kind of whacked and um, with a lot of company and uh, at the funeral and just uh, pray for him and pray for uh, Lord's protective hand uh, on him. So would appreciate that and pray for the funeral service to go well and, and could be a encouragement to everyone that's here today. So um, <clears throat> yeah, and we, we have quite a few people coming in and out right now. So I may have to cut this short. I apologize if that's the case. We'll uh, we'll just make do with uh, what we can get done, right? So, but appreciate. I, I probably made a mistake. I mentioned uh, Sunday that uh, we were a little bit short on on some of the sides, and not I mean not bad, you know. But I mean we ran out right at the end, which is good. Then there's nothing to take home, but it made me kind of nervous. So I said. Ah, Hey, we ought to bring a few more sides this time. <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, we will have food today. Uh, there is no doubt. <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> that's our people for you. Uh, gotta uh, love you guys. And, and, uh, Really appreciate uh, everyone uh, bringing stuff, praying, and uh, it it's a ministry that God's given us, and so want to help these families. So, well, uh, so I ask that you pray for that today. Um, wasn't anything in the news uh, worth even looking at today? Don't even care, right? So let's just let's just get into the word today, and maybe I'll end with uh, sharing with you a little bit of what. God gave me to give to the, the family today too. But uh, before we get to that, let's go in the Old Testament. And <clears throat> I've been reading in Genesis. I'm in chapters uh, 46 and 47 today. And uh, this is where yeah, Joseph had been sold into slavery, had been taken to Egypt. Um, there had become Potiphar's assistant and then uh, had been thrown in prison, gotten out of prison, and now is second in command right under Pharaoh in the entire country of Egypt. And um, God had told him there was going to be a famine, so seven years were really good. So he built up and stored a lot of food. And now we're into the famine. We're into the, about the second year. And uh, Jacob sends his brothers uh, to Egypt and uh, know this, you, we know the story, right? And so that, that's where we're at. And the brothers now have gone back to, uh, Jacob and told him that Joseph is alive. And so, uh, Jacob, uh, comes to Egypt and God tells him to, he says, Jacob, go to Egypt and, uh, there you will, uh, um, you're, you're going to be able to see your son again, right? And so they go, and here's the thing that I want to mention about this. I mean, and it ends up that they are, they are left there in Egypt, and I think they stay there now for 400 years. And so uh, before they come out of Egypt and move back uh, into the land of Canaan when Moses brings them out, right? Well, this is what it tells us when uh, Israel is Jacob's new name, right? And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein and grew and multiplied exceedingly. You know, I, I think we need to take encouragement in this as, as children of God that, look, if, if we know Christ is our Savior, then 
God promises to, to take care of us. And, and I find it interesting that even in the middle of a terrible famine, we see that God took care of Israel. And, and I understand it's Israel that we're talking about, but I also know that, that uh, God takes care of his own. And you always need to remember that guys, when whatever the challenges may be and what, whatever comes that, we need to remember that God's on our side and that, that God is worthy to worship in whatever the situation may be. And, you know, if things come and, and things are become more challenging, I don't know whether they will or not. They may. I mean, we, we do have real challenges in our world today. And it seems like uh, things are progressively getting harder and, and, and tougher, uh, even here in America. And, uh, it could continue to go that way. And, and if it does, we need to understand that what God's told us to do hasn't changed. And we keep doing what God tells us to do, and he will take care of us. And he is always worthy of worship. And this is this is amazing, too. The, the last verse of chapter 48, verse 31, and he said, swear unto me, uh, this is chapter 47, verse 31. And he said, swear unto me, and he swear unto him, and Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Here's the interesting thing. The, when, when Jacob was young, his name meant supplanter. And then later, uh, um, one who strives with God, right? And, and, and uh, finds God's blessings. Well, isn't it interesting how Jacob starts out his life as a supplanter and ends his life as a worshiper? Isn't that how God does in our lives? I mean, we think about what God's done throughout our lives and 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 the good that that He has produced in our lives as we follow Him, and and changes us from the supplanter to the worshiper. Uh, I mean, God is good, and we we always need to remember His goodness and His mercy and be thankful for that and. And tell others about him, and, and uh, be an example of of uh, God's goodness. And you know, there there's there's no time for <clears throat> walking around being a crank all the time, and and being a naysayer, and and uh, walking around in fear. You know, when we're walking around in fear, we're not trusting God. And and when we're anxious about things, well, we need to get past that and trust God and know that. That he he can and can and will uh, take care of us and and meet the needs that we have and and why do I know that because his word says so and we trust what his word says his word is powerful and and we never uh, should forget the things that God says uh, in his word and and live by that look in, I read in Psalm nineteen today in uh, verses seven through eleven. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, and, and it is. It, it is perfect in all ways. It's, it's complete. It's sound. It's entire. It, it is, it's, it's genuine, authentic, and you can trust it, right? And, and converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Uh, that's God's word. Let, let's live by it, guys. Let's stay in it. Let's study it. Let's Let's uh, find what it says and let's live by it. Direct our lives according to the word of God and you will not go wrong in how we need to, to continue to, to tell people about Jesus and, and continue to uh, worship him. And, and, and that truly is how we do that in uh, staying true to his word. And then I, I saw in, in Psalm 19, verse 14, here, here is... Uh, proper worship, you might say. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, uh, as I as I think of today and, and think of the Camacho family and think of their loss and, and you know, it's a time, it, it really is a time that we help 
we help the family, but you know how we help the family? By worshiping the Lord. And, and we want to let them see that today as a church family. How, how do we, how do we function in times of grief? How do we handle the, the stressors that come? How, how do we handle the, these kinds of situations in our lives? It's a tough world. And, and, and there are hard things that take place in this world. We all know that. We've experienced that in our lives. And, and we watch other people go through these experiences and, and know that there are some real challenges there. But in all of that, let us never quit worshiping God for who he is. And, and how do we do that? Well, here, let the words of my mouth and my meditation and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You know, here's a time where, where even in, in times of grief and sorrow and stress, we can still honor and glorify God. And, and I pray that we do. I, I pray that we, we, uh, bring honor and glory to Him today and, and let this family see a church family that loves them and loves the Lord and knows that the answer and the help that they need is in Jesus. And, we, we just need to uh, uh, continue to move forward and, and you know, don't, don't lose heart. Just don't lose heart in, in uh, doing the right thing and, and walking the proper way. And, and God, God warns of the ways of the evil and, and they're going to pay a price. I mean, it, it tells us here that in Proverbs 4, verse 13, 14, enter not in the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. So just stay away from it. And then he goes on uh, through this, and and it says in verse 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. I mean, everything, the 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 light of the wicked is going to go out, and, and they want to try to make it look like it's so bright and shining today, and, and they're trying to bully the righteous, and they try to bully the just, they try to bully what what truly is good in, in this world, and and they're blinded. All they're doing is is following the ways of the devil, and and uh, they they're blinded to what truly is good. And and really, what God is saying is their way is going to continue to grow dimmer and dimmer. But this is what He says about the just and the right. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. We we need to keep shining the light, guys. We, we need to be serious about telling people about Christ and, and walking close with him and being the, pro, the proper example that uh, we need to be. Don't get lazy on that. Don't, don't get complacent on that. that. That is why God has placed us here to bring honor and glory to him. And, and we do that by uh, building up believers and, and by evangelizing the lost. And, and we need to keep doing that every day. Don't, don't stop. And, and don't get so caught up in the ruts of life that that you forget the, the main purpose because this uh, days like this wake you up to it and make you realize we may not have tomorrow. So how are you going to spend your day today if you knew that tomorrow was it was the last of it? You know, let let's uh, live that way every day, right? And let's uh, watch God do something great in our lives and and work in our lives and and. Uh, and then the last thing, and and like I said, we we have I get distracted easy, and we got people coming in and out, so I'll, I'll get off here in a minute. But I, I want to share just a couple of things, the thoughts that I have for the family today, and and then it'll give you maybe a, a better idea how to pray for the family today, right? And I'm in Matthew. I was reading this in my devotions today, and uh, I asked the Lord, Lord, you got to give me something. I'm about to the eleventh hour here, and I don't have a message for today, and and so I got here bright and early this morning and, and uh, been studying and, and God uh, gave me some of this today and, and uh, pray that it can be a, a help to the family. But I was reading Matthew chapter 15 and first thing off, the, right, out of the, right out of the shoot is that uh, he condemns hypocrisy. And we find out that re religion breeds hypocrisy. I mean, religion is a system of rules. Religion is a, a system of rituals. And, and, and it's taught that doing these rituals, doing these rules is what's going to please God. And so pretty soon 
people are judged by their uh, judged uh, according to their holiness according to how they abide by the rules that are made up and then what they end up doing is building making more rules and more rules uh and the more rules you have the more you keep the holier you are and it's it's hypocritical because they start looking at others and they start thinking themselves to be something great by their rules and and it doesn't work. And and this is what he tells the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who were really good at these rules, right? And, and it says, Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He goes on later on and he says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Look, Jesus isn't interested in hypocrisy. Jesus wants us to be real. Jesus wants us to be genuine. That's exactly who he is. He's genuine in every way. And, and, and in his authenticity, one of the things is he will always condemn hypocrisy, always. But then you go on and, and we see in verses 21 uh, through 28, we see a young lady that is concerned about her daughter who, who has uh, 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 been possessed, you know, by, by a demon. And she comes and she begs for Jesus to, to cast out this demon. And, and she says, and, and he asks her, well, who are you? And, and you're, you're, uh, you're not even a, a a Jew, right? And and uh, he said, I he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came, she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, Is it not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs? And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I mean, the the humility that she had to come to Jesus and know that she's like, I have nothing to offer you. Nothing whatsoever. But by faith, I am trusting that you can save my daughter. And I'm trusting that you can do a work in her heart that no one else can. And 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 I know who I am. And, and she was humble. You see her love for her daughter. You see you, you see her, her humility in front of God. And, and you see her faith. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, Woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Uh, second thing is Jesus will always reward faith. So let's walk in faith. You know, let, let's trust him and, and know that he will do what he says he will do. If you, by faith, will trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, the, the one who's died for your sins, the one who shows that he was God by raising uh, from the dead and, and the power that he has there to take the wrath of God uh, from us. And, and he took it upon himself and, and delivered us and gave us salvation for all those who will accept that perfect gift of salvation. And so God will always reward faith. And then thirdly, you read down through the rest of this and, and it says, and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. And then it goes on even to show that, that he, he ends up feeding 4,000 people. Uh, the second time this has happened. And, and the, thirdly, the third thing that I see about Jesus in being authentic in who he is, he will always show compassion to the needy. Well, who are the needy? That's every one of us. First of all, you need a savior and you need to look to him and trust him as your savior. And then if you know him as your savior, then understand your weaknesses that you have and, and understand the inabilities that we have and, and, and know that Jesus Christ is there for us and we can trust him and walk with him and, 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 and he is able to meet our needs, and he is far bigger than any issues that we have. And we need to trust him. And he will always show compassion to the needy. That's our Savior. Isn't that good to know? I mean, I, I think of this family today, and I just want them to know 
that, that Jesus is capable of saving them, forgiving them, giving them eternal life, and then helping them get through these, these situations where you feel so hopeless and so helpless. And I'm telling you that Jesus is there and, and he is real. He is genuine. And you can always trust in him for whatever it is. So hey, it's uh, 920. I'm done. Family is just starting to get here already. Uh, we have had a ton of food coming in. <laughs> we'll probably feed the Quam people tonight too. So, but uh, hey, it's a good day, guys. Uh, it's a good day to tell somebody about Jesus, even in their grief. This is the time. Let's tell them about Jesus because He's the lifter up of our heads, and uh, He is sufficient. He's all that we need, right? So, God bless you guys. Let's go out there. Have a good day. Show the love of Christ. Tell somebody about Jesus. And uh, let's see God do something great and miraculous. God bless you guys.